Right. Um, greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, today is May 8th, 2022. It is 5.16 p.m. Uh, we will officially open up our UNI ACL Division 421 mass meeting. Um, we don't have a... We don't have a... Um, so we'll have a presentation today we'll from our first vice president. Today from our um, first vice president. All right. Um, so we had our uh, injection meeting. So we had our uh, injection meeting last night. Um, and the focus was the focus a couple things. Um, we're looking at the month of May. The month of May. We're looking at the month of May. Trying to get prepared for events coming up in those months. Events we're also up looking up at months. property and um, property. Looking at some ways to acquire some property here in Atlanta for two purposes. One is to to have a home base for our division, and two is to um, increase our funds and uh, provide a method for uh, funds uh, through real estate. So that's something that we're working on. First Vice President's got a presentation that will show to show um, where we are with the process and um, some of our options. Um, so before we go into that, um, I guess I need to do the roll call and the pledge. So I got to do that. Let me pull up the uh, ground rules, conference call ground rules. Conference call ground rules. Uh, this meeting is divided into two halves. It's really going to be three. Uh, first portion of the meeting, we focus on a topic. Topic for tonight will be a presentation by our first vice president. Um, afterwards, we will give members a chance to comment and ask questions over the topic during this phase of the meetings. Focus solely on the subject. If you have questions and comments, you'll have a chance to talk about whatever you like during the second half. Um, well, the third half, actually. The third half is members. third portion is members share. Everyone will have three to four minutes to share a topic of their choice. Uh, rule number two, please be considerate. Do not go over your time. When you have, when you have the floor, we want everyone to have a chance to express his or herself. Even though the time is going to affect how long other members have, you have something important to share that takes longer than five minutes. You can also, yeah, okay. to ensure we hear all speakers, keep your phones on mute when you're not speaking. Use a mute on your phone, or if you're on the conference line, you press four star, four star to unmute. Have pen and paper available, or you can use your phone to take notes, save member contact information, or make a list of things you would like to comment or ask questions about when it's your turn to speak. Uh, there will be people on this call with different ideas, religions, and opinions on your own. It's okay to disagree, but we must not become disagreeable and nasty towards one another. Sometimes we have to agree to disagree. Ladies, do not give out your personal phone number during the conference calls. Instead, give out your business number or email. Monitor our calls the best of our abilities, but we do have limitations. Nevertheless, any type of harassment is frowned upon in this organization. Members frowned. Harassing others will be removed. Uh, and last, uh, do not use the N-word during the call. Also be mindful of unnecessarily using and overusing curse words. And then we'll go through the roll. Uh, 
second. Okay, so for the roll today, uh, we have, we need to pull up the, um, this is real. All right, so uh, for the role, I want to go over um, officers first, uh, so roll call of officers, and then uh, ordinary members following. Um, so President John, myself, I am here. First Vice President, Brother Ignatius, uh, here. Second Vice President, Brother Kwabana, not here. Absent. Third Vice President, Brother Cornelius, absent. Lady President, Mama Nina, absent. Uh, second, no, First Lady Vice President, Sister Tania is absent. She's excused. Legal Attorney, Attorney Emotep, Legal Defense Coordinator, uh, absent. Motions Coordinator, Brother Ken Wardo, absent. Constitutions Coordinator, Brother James, absent. Chaplain, uh, Brother Mitchell, is absent. Uh, Treasurer President, Robert Marvin is absent. And Black Cross Nation Coordinator, Sister Erica, is absent as well. And finally, Assistant Treasurer, Brother Andrew, uh, is absent. So uh, for our executive body, we have two members present. And for normal members, we have Brother uh, Dr. Shams, member number 172 of New York, uh, Brother Art in Alexandria, Virginia, Brother Ormond. Uh, and that is on the Zoom. And then on the conference line, we have Sister Mary calling in from Suffolk, Virginia, and Brother Omar Mukhtar um, is in Ohio. So on the line, we have a total of seven individuals. Um, that is our role. And now we'll go into pledge to the red, black, and green flag. Okay. A lot of background noise. Okay. Well, we about to do the play, so I guess that's going to keep coming up you. That's all right. All right. So you ready to play? Uh, repeat after me. Um, find your red, black, and green flag with 50 money in mind. Put your black fist in the air. I commit my body, mind, and spirit. I commit my, my mind, 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 mind and spirit. Spirit. to the protection, defense, and security. To the protection, protection, defense, and security of the red, black, and green. Of the red, black, and green. Black and green. I dedicate my life to the redemption of Mother Africa. I dedicate, I dedicate my, my life, life to the redemption of Mother Africa. To the redemption of Mother Africa. And the liberation of her scattered black children. And the liberation of scattered black children. I accept for myself and my descendants. I accept for myself and my descendants. The teachings of universal African nationalism. <laughs> the teachings of universal African nationalism. <laughs> and I promise that our children will be instilled. And, and promise, I promise that our children will be instilled. With the 
purpose and knowledge of themselves as African people. With the purpose and knowledge of themselves as African people. In order that the cause of our struggle will neither falter nor fail. In order that the cause of our struggle will neither falter nor fail. Until all black people are free and united. Until all black people are free and united. Through one God. Through one God. Through one God. One aim. One aim. One destiny. One destiny. One destiny. One destiny. Race first. Race first. Final uh, additional. So if you yeah, thank you. Go back to mute. Uh, one final uh, introductory thing that I'll do before I pass the pass it over to Brother Macias for the presentation um, is our preamble. So we'll say our preamble in the beginning and the end of all of our meetings. I'll share this document for those on Zoom. But if anyone has any questions as to what the UNIACL, what Division 421 is, what it stands for, what it's about, um, it can be answered in the preamble of the Constitution, which states, quote, uh, the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League is a social, friendly, humanitarian, charitable, educational, institutional, constructive, and expansive society and is founded by persons desiring to the utmost to work for the general uplift of the Negro peoples of the world. And the members pledge themselves to do all in their power to preserve the rights of their noble race and to respect the rights of all mankind, believing always in the brotherhood of man and the fatherhood of God. The motto of the organization is one God, one aim, one destiny. Therefore, let justice be done to all mankind, realizing that if the strong oppresses the weak, Confusion and discontent will ever mark the path of man. But with love, faith, and charity towards all, the reign of peace and plenty will be heralded into the world, and the generations of men shall be called blessed. So that is our the preamble from the Constitution of the UNIA ACL. Um, and with that, uh, Brother Macias, are you are you ready? Yep, I'm 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 ready. Uh, greeting, greetings, family. How how are you all today? Fine, brother. Okay, give me one second. I want to share my content really quickly with you guys, uh, so that we can be able to all follow along and be on the same page. All right, give me one second. I'm going to uh, share my screen uh, with with everybody. Thank you, uh, first vice president. And again, this presentation is about uh, the our goals of acquiring property uh, here in the Atlanta area, uh, greater Atlanta area. But um, these legal principles uh, can be applied um, in different areas, uh, but there are different um, legal criteria and, and time constraints depending on what state you're in. But what uh, First Vice President is getting ready to present is uh, focused on the Georgia, the Georgia legal system. Okay. All right. I'm pulling my screen here now. Family, uh, we, in order for us to, can, you, can everybody see my see my screen? See my screen? No, we saw it a second ago, but. Not now. Okay, let me try it one more time here. All right, give me one second, family. Okay, is it there now? No, still not. Okay. 
sure what's going on here. Okay, one more. Let me try one more. I know you sent it to me. Yeah, if you are able to pull it up, President John, it might be easier. Because uh, I'm on my phone, so I'm trying to do it from my phone. I can, yeah, I can do it. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Um, I'll jump right into it, though. Um, economic development through land acquisition. Um, just what it, it, Marcus Garvey uh, always focused on economic development. And um, me, personally, I, I consider myself a, a, a global economist. Um, studied in the in the white in in in, in, the, in the systems of to study uh, economics and um, all across the globe and especially when it comes to nation building. And one thing that I, I, I always understood that a nation is a nation because of the the land and the borders that it governs and it controls. Uh, nation is no nation without without uh, land. Um, and let me come back into the Zoom so I can see. Right now, um, it's coming up here. And you can go to the second slide, President John. It's time to take back the land, people. Uh, a, a nation, not a nation without ownership of land. Land is the source of all economic development and central banking, which is uh, super important, with the expectation that man will use his energy to cultivate the land that's how land gets its value um, because of our energy that we put into it. So the energy that we put into land, it produces food, clothing, shelter, experience and overall quality of life. Uh, and, and that quality of life and, and abundance, when one, has, when one has direct access to the land, we're able to control the, that abundance that we are able to extract from the land. Uh, fortune favors the bold, and this is, presentation is about us being bold and acquiring the land in whatever way possible so that we may have the resources to, to own the quality of life that we control and, and invoke that confidence in our people to be able to say, I want to join the UNIA because they are focused on creating resources uh, for us. One thing that um, is also focused in the presentation is for us to be able to create avenues for us to create assets and revenue for us as members to be able to make some money, to be able to operate in this world, as for the government to be able to make that capital to invest in assets and resources for future development of, um, of what we're trying to do. Uh, you can go to the next slide, President John. Um, there's three ways to acquire land right now um, that are most common. One of the ways is, is adverse possession. The second is the tax debt payoff. The third way is to purchase. The first one I want to talk about is adverse possession. There, every country all the way from Australia has a law called adverse possession. You can look it up right now and Google it. There are always five uh, um, aspects to the law. The number one that's most important is that whenever you're taking the property, you have to be notorious about it. Um, as a government, as a nation, uh, one of the things that we have to stand on is our rights as direct descendants of God. As Garvey talks about it all the time, um, we have the right to govern ourselves and to create resources for ourselves. Um, so we have to own that right. And um, when it comes to land, uh, possession is, we've heard is always for possession is always nine tenths of the law when a person has land and they're not utilizing it to where the community is uh uh benefiting from the land or or it's, it's going unattended to uh this law is in place where someone can utilize that land uh to the benefit of the community and uh be able to take ownership of it after an, a time frame each state has a different time frame that you can actually get a title for that land. But possession of the land still allows you to be able to utilize it for your needs and to also to create capital. Um, right now, 
Georgia law is 25 years till we can get the title for it. But the title is secondary to the ability to utilize the land. You still can utilize the land if you are able to acquire it and possess it. So um, the reason it's called adverse possession because you're possessing it against a stated owner. Um, so that first one, it, it's by when someone owns land and they're not taking care of it or in a certain way, a person comes in and starts taking care of it. And in most cases, uh, the business owner uh, is not taking care of it because it's not feasible to them. It's because the um, taking care of land is not, is not returning a profit to them. So when these, these, these other corporations or other entities or other races are going and taking the land, they've taken it with the expectation that this person will not come back for this land or will not care enough to pay whatever liens that they uh, put on the property from the work and the time and the energy that they put into developing that property. So that's how uh, many adverse possessions are done. Once someone finds land that's abandoned, they go and start working on it immediately. And then they put a lien for the work that they did. They sent out letters to the owners or the stated owners uh, on the tax assessor's website. And they say, hey, we got this property. We're, we're, we're working on it. We're doing it. Where are you? You know, and uh, in many cases, I won't put a, a stated percentage on it. But in most cases, the owner doesn't respond. And that um, possessor uh, becomes an owner over that time frame. Uh, eventually, as a nation, years down the line, we, we should be able to write our own titles and have our own title company to not have to wait that time frame. But that is down the line once we get more members and established. But again, possessing the land is what matters the most. The second way to, to possess land is to pay tax debt. And currently, in the state of Georgia, when you pay someone's taxes that they have they are behind on, they have to pay you back 15% of the taxes that you owe. Um, and that is a seven seven year period before they pay you back, before you ever get ownership of that property for them not paying you back. But if you acquire the property and they have to pay you back for that property, that is a way for to, uh, that a lot of uh, investors get capital to be able to invest in other projects because sometimes the landowner does come back and pay them back that percentage for paying those taxes. And that's just another way to get an increase in the money that you've invested. But in a lot of cases, the, the owners have walked away and, the, and they end up owning those properties, but that with that small tax payoff, and then they, then they start paying the city uh, continuously for the taxes that are owed on that purchase in that, in, that, in that manner. And the third way is traditional way to just purchase it with either a cash or a loan. Um, there's um, a few reasons why we would acquire property and what we can do with it. If you could go to the um, protect slide, the last one, President John, uh, with examples of um, why we would want to, um, to, to get property and what we could do, do with it. Um, one is to occupy it, where our members for individual investment work for residential or student housing, um, um, that's one reason to, to, to grab property for our people, for them to live in. The other one for, to, for business utilization, for businesses to be able to operate in our schools, our marketplaces, um, for, for them to be able to operate in. And third is for community investment, like um, social welfare, parks, uh, re recreation, agriculture, manufacturing, uh, things like that, resource development. That's the, the third reason why us as a nation, why we would want to uh, own property. Um, as I stated in the first slide, a property gets its value from us putting our energy into it and turning that into a resource. And can you go to the cultivate slide um, for a sec? So um, when we get property, there's a couple things that we, 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 ways that we could turn the property into an asset when we put our energy into it. Um, we could wholesale it. The only reason a nation would wholesale property is to get a uh, working capital to buy other assets. Only we would want to do that. Um, the second way is to, um, and that's of course, get the property, don't renovate it at all. 
but sell it to somebody who who wants to utilize it for their use. And they would give us the fiat capital that we would use that fiat to go buy seats or 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 whatever we want to buy to to, to create more assets. Uh, the second way reason we would get property is to um, renovate it and sell it so we can get a higher, uh, a, a more capital um, than we would on a wholesale if we renovated it first. And we, of course, we will only do that to get use that capital to buy more assets that our nation would need to be able to uh, produce other goods and services that we would uh, uh, that would help our, our our members to have a better quality of life. Uh, but the ultimate way reason that we want to buy property is the third way to renovate and utilize. A, a nation is no not a nation unless you're governing land. And uh, the individual houses, the individual businesses, the um are all land that we can govern. It doesn't always have to be succinct right beside each other, but um as we acquire properties as our nation that goes on, 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 on the books. But I, that's the ultimate focus is for us to uh, get properties, renovate them so our members can utilize those properties. We can create businesses, jobs, entertainment, uh, events, quality of life by having land that we have access to, having places for us to meet at, which is super important for us to be able to build camaraderie so that when we get more members, they can say, hey, come here and meet us here. Um, it's one of the major reasons why we want to hold properties, but also for us to say, hey, join the UNIA. We, you know, what, what do you do? We have a place for you to do what you do here. Um, that's the renovate and hold. And that's what America does, that's what all, all most nations do. They have their borders set. And you do, if you try to take part of in their borders, uh, you know, that's when wars are had. That's what you have in Ukraine right now in Russia. When they say, hey, we, you know, we're taking these borders down. We want your property under in our books too. Um, but the major focus. So wholesale, if we need immediate cash. Fix and flip, if we want cash to buy other assets. But utilizing whole is the uh, ultimate focus that we, we, we of course, we want to focus on. So um, that's the three ways that we would, cultivate the land and turn it into assets that we all can uh, benefit from. Uh, if you go to the third slide, President John, um, ways that we all can benefit from this properties. Um, and we have to, whenever you create assets, we want to be able to dis distribute those assets to your membership. We all can create ways to share in those wholesale profits. Uh, of course, that's, uh, like I said, on way we wholesale, we want quick cash for investment capital. Um, and um, we, we can share in the flip, it's, it's slower cash with the um, the uh, renovate and flip, but it's higher profits for us. And of course, um, we, we can share in the equity of the whole um, by uh, preserving that equity for our nation. And that's in central currency, central banks are created from the value of property. Um, and of course, as a nation, eventually we want to get to a level if we really want to operate as a nation where we have our own central bank and our own central currency, but we have to acquire land first to even get to that level three to four years down the road or however fast uh, the most high says, but we have to have land to, to root the value of our currency in before we can even think about having a central bank for our nation. So the first focus as business development department where we want to focus on uh, economics. Uh, the, the green is for the land. And we have to focus on getting back to land. Yes, Mother Africa, but of course we know Africa was all Pangea at first. The whole world is ours as a global government to be able to govern. We have to step up and be bold and, 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 and get our rightful place. And then the world is waiting on us. So uh, being able to hold that property and and uh, and create equity that our nation can bank on um, is the ultimate goal, and uh, that will create that fourth ways where we have to protect the land, unutilized land. Uh, it, it 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 it's prime for other people to come into, and that's why the fourth we want to make sure that we have a process in place to occupy it. 
We have processes in place to utilize it. And we have processes in place for the community to be able to, to utilize those properties too uh, when we do have that. Um, finally, the steps to get started um, uh, is the last slide where we have to create teams to be able to focus on each one of these four steps. And uh, success is always small things done well. Whenever you have a process and you're thinking about doing the entire process yourself, it could be overwhelming, daunting, and it could be stagnant as well. When we break down the process, the different teams who are focused on a part of the process and doing that well, we can really be good at what we do and we can actually create resources for our people and assets for our people. And when we are able to do that well, because I have continuously run into the same question, what can the UNIA do for me? And it's, it's an unavoidable question. We have to be able to bring resources to our people and we aren't able to do that. We're going to continue to have stagnant membership. So um, with us bringing this to the people where, hey, we want to build generational wealth through the land. Uh, we need an acquisition team, someone focused on researching these properties, going to the tax assessor's website, someone focused on driving around. When they see properties that look abandoned, take a picture of it, send it to us, send us the address. And that team, then the secondary team uh, will focus on researching those properties, seeing uh, who owns it and seeing our process of acquiring it and possessing the property. Um, that will be, uh, so once we possess it, what are we gonna do with it? Um, and, and, and that is the, the, the fourth team, the protection team, uh, is this property for occupation? Is it for utilization for businesses or is it for communal use? That's the protection team. The cultivation team, hey, once they figure out what we're gonna do with it, cultivation team goes in, that's the, the, the contractors, the developers, the people who are actually going to work on the properties, and they go in to do that. Sometimes we want to sell those properties. Sometimes we want to get capital. Uh, we want to have a team that's really good at that. And that's the distribution team, who if we do want to sell it, um, they are very good at that. They, we can get the capital. Or if we want to uh, utilize the equity in those properties to be able to uh, – uh, bank on the equity credit center bank, that district team uh, will be versed in doing that and, and start doing the research on that and how that could help us uh, create value within our nation. So separating ourselves within those different teams that do different things will help us each focus on small things and, and be able to execute those small things well to be able to make this a reality for us to start uh, finding properties for us to have a headquarters, our members to live in, our businesses that's in our community so we can start building our own economic system where we are able to say, hey, we'll help you build your business and we have a place for you to go as well. Um, and then also for those community uses like create manufacturing, creating assets, uh, seeds, farming, and things like that. The last thing I would say is there's a model. Uh, in Philadelphia, uh, there is a, a group called the, uh, the Peace Park, who are UNIA members, and they took 14 lots, and uh, two of them are houses, and, they, and the rest of them, they turned into a community farm. Um, and uh, the members, they have a volunteer uh, day every Wednesday where members come out and work on the farm. Um, of course, any member who works on the farm, the food is free. They call it the participatory uh, democracy. Um, and uh, it's a model that's being done. And that can be duplicated where we can do this in city by city by city, uh, starting within the cities of Georgia, uh, which we have jurisdiction over. But the major thing that the um, guy talked about who, 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 who did this 10 years ago, and they had this land, he said that when they got it, they moved fast. When they got it, they had a work party. They, 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 they snatched the properties and they flipped them really quickly with about 15 to 20 guys. They had the food, they had the music and they worked on those properties right away. So once you do that, that, that initial work phase, that creates that first lien that that owner has to pay back. And like I said earlier, most of the time the owners won't want to pay back and they'll just um, give the properties to you. In this case in Philadelphia, the owners never showed up, but the city did. 
the city showed up and tried to, hey, you guys don't belong. You guys don't live here. That's your properties. They defended it. The city, the city walked out and they were able to keep those properties because guess what? The law is in the books. Um, you're not squatters. You're only a squatter if you try to sneak. But if you're notorious, if you say, you sign those letters and say, we're taking property, where are you owner? Then the law supports you to be able to acquire properties and utilize them for communal use, especially when you're show that you're utilizing it for the community. The city uh, has no grounds to stand on to tell you to uh, uh, leave these properties. So these are some of the ways um, that we want to, to start focusing on um, building the economic system for our people by first acquiring the land. Um, we are going to start having meetings for each one of these different four teams so that we can uh, first train and know exactly what we're doing. And hopefully by June, July, we're able to get started and start grabbing properties. But we definitely want to start training on these different aspects on how to research properties with the acquisition team. We want to start training people on how to develop those properties with a conversion team, contracting. We want to know how to sell properties and how to find buyers. They want to know how to plan and make and, and know how to zone properties right and know which ones are good for residential community, which ones are good for business, and which ones are good to just make a form out of or or manufacturing destination or a uh, a place where we can create assets at. So um, we have to be bold in what we do. Um, and Garvey teaches us to move confidently and take ownership of this race to control resources, because that's what it's all about. Is That's what the race is. And the ultimate race is to control the resource of our time and energy, which gives land its value. Because as, as uh, in, in, in Kemet, we call the energy the rock and the land is the source. And when we put our energy into the land, we create resources, the raw sources. So I'm happy to be able to uh, be a part of this organization, which who has men and women who are, 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 are um, committed to lending their energy, now let's, let's help them give direction to where they can lend it to that's gonna create assets for everybody to be able to um, grow upon and grow our generational wealth upon. Um, I'm definitely happy to answer any questions. Um, and if I left anything off, hopefully I'll answer it. I'll be able to address that in the questions that come up. Thank you, First Vice President. Um, I open the floor at this uh, time for any questions or comments in regards to um, the presentation that our first vice president gave. Great first. Great first, Dr. Sam, how you doing? I'm okay. Yes, great first. Um, the, the, the organization I'm thinking about had land, but they didn't have security. They, 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 they owned the land at one time legally, you know, as well as sovereignly as well. But they didn't have the proper security to protect them from anybody coming in to, to, to take it over, just take it away from it. They didn't have outside security. They had internal security, yes, security on the land. But they didn't have, like, uh, you know, acquisitions of other other people, other countries, other entities, other other militaries, what have you, to uh, help 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 protect the land that that they wanted to um, keep and live on and um, produce themselves. You know, uh, families and um, agriculture, what have you. They did not have the proper security. The organization, the um, government, I'm talking about. It's the Duwapia People's Government. That's how they fell. Yes. Peace and race first. Uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely am a member of the uh, of the WAPI. I'm a, I am a civilian as well. Uh, I fellowship with them in, I joined in Philadelphia. And that is, I, me, I always try to study failure. And that's one of those things. Garvey one of the differences that, that Garvey and Dr. York um, has, Garvey teaches us that to, to move in a way where we are not necessarily focused on 
being an agitator. Um, this is my, I'll speak to that too, President John, but the focus of utilizing land um, to a way that I, I feel like a lot of times when uh, our, our leaders focus on, you know, being uh, against the government, it, it, it creates a target. Um, and I feel like yeah. Barbie t- teaches us to be able to um, just stand on our right to produce for our people more than, 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 than agitating the government that exists is that we are here to create assets. And, th- and with that being the focus versus, um, you know, uh, really trying to stand out and, and speak against other people, I think that, that, that we are, that, that creates a form of protection, that we are just creating assets for our people. But uh, I would love to hear from President John speak to that too as well, if you like to. Uh, yeah, um, excellent comment, Dr. Shams, uh, and excellent response, uh, Brother Macius. Um, I agree with both of you. Uh, actually, that's why I wanted to open the floor to hear what everyone else said first before I made any comments. Um, one thing is, it, one thing. Well, let me let me touch on what Brother Macius was saying um, in regards to Garveyism, UNIA uh, Division Four Twenty One. Um, I like what Brother Omicia said uh, when he said notorious, you know, um, when we go about doing this, this is not something that we're going to try to do in private uh, or in secrecy. Um, we will approach uh, the local government uh, and, and the local uh, whatever jurisdiction, because Atlanta is broken up into 12 districts and they've got six different zones. So um, we have to you know, contact the zones for the police department uh, that we're in, as well as the district um, to, uh, to have a relationship with the uh, council, uh, the elected council members in, those, in that district um, to, to make sure everyone's aware of what we're doing and what our intentions are um, and that we're not trying to do anything in private. Uh, so that's the first thing is, is the notorious aspect of it. Um, we, we, Garvey teaches us that we basically have to have a relationship with the government. Um, in, in the course of African philosophy, he says, you know, um, anytime you're trying to build a movement within the jurisdiction of another nation, um, if you do anything to uh, be in the bad graces of the nation in which uh, you reside, they can easily uh, overnight snap of a finger, shut down your movement. Um, and I think that's, you know, the Nwapians is a, a, an example of that. Um, however, as I said, we, we plan on taking a different approach, uh, an upfront approach. Um, and then secondly, uh, I also agree with the protection aspect. Um, from Malcolm X, I know my, my readings of Malcolm X, I can't, I don't have the exact quote, but it says something about there's no point in trying to build something uh, if you can't protect it. Uh, so one recommendation that I would make, and uh, and it's on this slide that we're on, I would recommend we move protection to the third level. So uh, acquire, cultivate, uh, and then the third step is protect. Um, and then beyond protect, uh, if we have time and we have availability, we can look at distribution. Um, but to Dr. Shams's point, and to, you know, uh, to bring in our ancestor brother Malcolm, um, we have to have protection as a critical component. Um, and <clears throat> so those were the two things that I wanted to say initially. Uh, third thing I wanted to say is, and we talked about this last night, but let me see, let me see. Yeah, I think this slide is, is best representative. When it comes to our position as an organization uh, and funding, um, I believe, you know, first of all, I'll go to the first slide. I believe adverse possession is our best bet at this time for an immediate um, turnaround, unless we start to tap into our network of, of individuals that have uh, resources and we can look at tax debt payoff or purchase. But from a financial standpoint, adverse possession seems the, the most feasible. And then when we look at this portion of it, um, uh, sharing wholesale profits, sharing the flip. So um, 
either, you know, as, as we said on, on this slide, purchase and flip it um, with no renovations. I don't really see us today being able to do that. Um, I do know that we have the network and we have the potential to be able to do that, but immediately I don't see us having the resources to buy something to flip it. Um, and the second one, fix and flip, um, I would put that in the same situation as the first one. And then when I think about what we were saying with adverse possession, uh, one thing that was coming to my mind was how long it would take. Well, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. In order to do the first of two of share the profits, sharing the flip, we would have to have a title uh, in order to be able to sell them. Um, so <clears throat> I'm saying a lot, but basically what I'm saying is from the position of the organization financially, adverse possession and purchasing to hold it and utilize is my primary focus. Um, if we start to organize our people and we start to uh, 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 organize our resources, then we can start talking about um, buying to sell or buying to renovate and flip. Um, but I just feel based on where we are right now, our options are fairly limited. <clears throat> that's, that's my thoughts. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Uh, the first focus should be to share and hold. I meant to uh, fix and hold and, and create. Like I said, that equity helps us be able to create, um, you know, our own currency. That, that, that's a future conversation. But um, yeah. when uh, we create that equity, um, as a, to be able to build an equitable base, and credibility for our nation, I think, should be our first focus. So I, I'm just, I, I agree with you, President John. I don't want to go too far on that. Okay, I understand. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more. Um, is there any other questions or comments uh, from, from the family? Yeah, peace, family. Brother, brother Omar Mutar, East Cleveland, Ohio. Peace, brother Omar. Uh, yeah, good conversation on the property. Uh, as, as you know, I don't know whether you know uh, the brother, uh, brother uh, Jay Morrison in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Jay Morrison, you know, have a very strong story about dealing with the real estate. And he has built up a multi-million dollar real estate. And uh, it's called the uh, Tussa Legacy House, after, yeah. named after Tussa, Oklahoma. And he's a very good expert in the, uh, in, in the field of real estate. If people are familiar with his story, his story, he started out as a drug dealer and built a multi-million dollar real estate empire. So that's so he would be able to help with any information. Uh, I just recently got an email from him. Me and my family, ourselves, we deal in real estate. So I'm also on bit of real estate school. Uh, there is some other ways that we can do as a nonprofit. One of the things that they have, they have what is called uh, what they call a short sale, but not only can you short sale houses, you can also short sale land. Just say you purchase land, hold it until you sell it, you know, and that's where you don't have to put any of your own money up front. Those are some of the things you can do. You become a, a wholesaler and then you make your interest as you resell to someone else and bring your profits in. That's one way. The only other thing that we do is we do actually uh, buy houses and, and rehab them. Uh, it's a little bit easier for us because we have a crew, so so we actually uh, rehab houses. So a lot of times, you know, we can uh, purchase houses for a little, and then if you have a nonprofit, like a CDC, a community development corporation, they can actually give you property for free. That's another way you can use as far as getting property. And then uh, on, the, on the shorter note, the other ways you can do is call a, a quick claim which is where you can get property for as little as 1500 to $2,000. You can take possession. So it's a lot of different ways you can do if you want to go ahead on and start in real estate. But definitely Jay Morrison of uh, Tussle Legacy House in Atlanta, Georgia, would be a big help uh, to show you how to, you know, accumulate some property. Uh, and also seeking after the nonprofits, such as setting up a CDC, a community development corporation, where those properties can actually be donated to you if you have a nonprofit for free. Peace to the family. Peace, uh, Brother Umar, and uh, thank you for that suggestion. Um, actually, 
brother Jay Morrison's name did come up uh, yesterday during our executive meeting, and um, I didn't want to, uh, you know, bring his name up unless somebody else did. But I thank you for doing that. Um, we are planning to work with um, brother Jay Morrison. Um, I was supposed to go down and meet with him today, but the, uh, the facility is closed on Sunday, so I have to catch him this week. Um, he is, to my knowledge, based on the financial records, what I've seen, he is a uh, dues paying member uh, at Division 421. He's just not registered. So um, we will make that connection. Um, we will, you know, find out um, what we can do with, you know, what type of benefit we can bring to our people through that relationship. And um, I'll get with our first vice president and discuss potential for a nonprofit um, through our, our business department. We've, <clears throat> yeah, we, we haven't been, yeah, we'll, we'll look into it. Um, there's, there's pros and cons when it comes to nonprofit, um, but um, the pros may outweigh the cons at this point, and it may be something that we want to look into, even if it's only from a temporary standpoint. So thank you, Brother Omar, for those two uh, suggestions and recommendations, and we definitely will follow up on those. I, 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 wanted, I wanted to speak to the part about the city uh, giving properties too, um, because that, that, that's always, that's been one of my uh, um, visits with this as well. Um, I, uh, that's when 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 Gary talks about us having a relationship with the government, you know, and most cities have what's called a blight regiment where they want to get rid of blight, um, which is basically distressed properties because uh, a lot of those uh, properties are abandoned are risk for crime. Uh, so one of the things that I've always thought about was whenever you present anything, you always present win-win situations like the mafia do, you know, win-win for everybody. Um, when you come with an entire developed community development plan and you approach the city, a lot of times they will, like, they will give you those properties. Um, and so we want to be diplomatic, you know, that's what garbage halls to do. And I, I, I agree that we definitely can uh, um, get a lot of properties gifted to us from the cities um, once we grow this relationship and we move in a way uh, that we show that we are here to benefit and to help ease some of the um, burdens that they have uh, through the work that we're doing. Yes. Um, now, I know we have a lot of people <clears throat> outside of uh, Atlanta on the call. Um, however, I uh, will let everyone know this this will be our focus uh, for the near future and primarily what I'm looking for from our membership um, would be two things. One is one would be um, as we said, you know, uh, we need a labor force. So uh, any individuals that have any type of skills in uh, landscaping, um, general contracting, um, electrician, plumbing, um, just anything related to renovating homes. Um, we need those individuals. We, we will need those individuals to be leaders. Secondly, uh, any individuals that, that aren't necessarily experts in those fields, but they have the physical capability um, to contribute. Um, we're looking for those individuals as well. And both of these in the in the long term, they will be uh, paid positions. You know, um, that's that's what we're trying to develop is um, somewhat of a business aspect of it. To where, um, as as Brother Omar said, they have a uh, they have a workforce, they have a labor force. So when they acquire property, they already have a team. You know, that knows who's going to do the lighting, who's going to do the plumbing, who's going to do the landscaping, uh, who's going to get the roof. Um, they already have that established. So that's what we need to develop uh, in the Atlanta area. Uh, we have to organize that um, and, and have a plan for being able to finance that. And then second, and then thirdly, I guess, what we will be looking for is um, brothers like Jay Morrison. So those that are, have the financial 
abilities or the financial capabilities to um, acquire property, um, have you know real estate knowledge, um, understand the legal system, um, and and basically you know knows how to knows knows about those contracts and, and those relationships. So um, as I said, um, I know most of y'all are, are outside of Atlanta, brother Orman. I think you are the only one that's in the area, um, but I'm just putting this out there uh, and making it, putting it on record that uh, moving forward, at least for this summer, uh, that'll be a big focus for uh, for Division 421 is building that team of, of, as President Ross Marvin would say, skills, talents, and intelligence uh, in organizing that. So um, I just want to put it out there, Brother Orman, I think you're the only one like I said, uh, Brother Macius is already on board. He's here. Um, the other individuals on the call are not uh, in the Atlanta area. So you're the first one that we could ask directly um, if this is something that you know you think you'd be able to support. And um, as we have more meetings and as we have our in-person meetings, I'll be asking more members the same question. So Brother Orman, I, I wanted to uh, put you on the spot for a second and just uh, find out what your thoughts are on uh, this program for the division. Brother Orman, you there? Okay. Um, right. Well, Brother Orman, you there? <laughs> You're on mute. Okay. We hear you now. Um, okay. I was just saying, um, uh, you're the only one other than myself and Brother Omasius on the call that's in the Atlanta area. Um, okay. And we're going to be, you know, asking, uh, you know, the individuals that can contribute immediately, um, those that are in the in our jurisdiction, what they think about this program, and if it's something um, that you would like to support, if so, how you could support. Oh, I'll contribute to it. And uh, um, I've been in building for about 45 years, so uh, in code enforcement and building and uh, so I would contribute my expertise also, uh, as much of it as I have to ask. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Orman. Um, we appreciate, you know, that uh, that pledge of commitment. Um, we will be following up with you uh, as we, you know, get more details and get more individuals involved. But thank you for, for stepping up, my brother. You're welcome. Well, um, that was the main focus. Um, I guess uh, at this point, we kind of went over, we did discuss the topic, but was there any, um, was there any other comments in regards to the topic uh, before we move to the next phase of the meeting? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Peace, family. This is Brother Omar Mutar. Uh, Brother Omar. Okay, uh, when we when we actually had a program, we had a organization called Youth Corps Engineers, and what it was, it was a program for young people to actually get involved in in the construction work as mm -hmm. contractors. And as we got them involved with contractor work, by it being nonprofit, people was willing to donate, you know, hat protection tools, different things like that for them to carry out their trade. So we actually turned it into a trade. Even some of the, uh, the the young brothers that came through our group actually started their own LLC and, and are also a sole proprietorship businesses in, comp, carp, in carpentry, landscaping, and painting, and different things. They set up their own company. So that's, that's a good thing that we can do. And that being attached to a nonprofit can also uh, heal uh, some some of the benefits of getting money, and they did a very good job. And and, and even in, in uh, doing uh, uh, masonry and concrete, they also set up their own businesses. 
And the other thing is, is that by us having a nonprofit, we were able to uh, solicit the uh, the uh, court system to have some of the guys come and work off their community service. So they would actually send us people for the program who had to do community service work, work off their, their fines and different things like that, and they'd be enlisted into the program. Peace to the family. Thank you, Brother Omar. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of work to do, um, but it, thank you for that. It, it lets us know, you know, we're on the right track and, and we're thinking the right things uh, in regards to future potential of, um, you know, providing work for the youth and, and providing work for those in need. <clears throat> but yeah, we, we've still got quite a bit of work to do. Any other comments? Yeah, uh, I'd like to um, contribute. Uh, some of the uh, affiliates to the Division 330 uh, branch uh, have, uh, they are establishing a a credit union, and they're trying to um, be the first black credit union in the country. Um, mm. And mm. they they are just um, asking donations, and they're getting ready to charter their chapter. So you might want to check with uh, some of the brothers in Division 330, because they've been pushing that hard in the last uh, three months, I'd say. Um, so, uh, okay. so I just wanted to contribute that. Uh, thank you, Brother Art. And um, for those that don't know, Division 330 is uh, the UNI ACL division in Washington, DC. Uh, Brother Art is in uh, Northern Virginia, and uh, thank you, Brother Art. I did not even know that um, you were supporting our DC uh, division, but I definitely appreciate that. And um, the information and the updates is, is, is appreciated as well. Well, in regards I, to I what you're saying, go ahead. I, I have been uh, following them, but they have, uh, I guess, uh, reformed their, their group to be a. Uh, um a rehabilitation um yeah. uh chapter so some of their members have formed a new group called appeal incorporated so appeal really? is actually doing the uh the uh credit union okay i so, didn't know that uh, um Go ahead, yeah, Art. it's a lot of crossover between Appeal and the UNIA 330. Uh, a lot of the same members. Mm. So um, you might want to contact Gr Brother Bayi. I know he's in both groups. Uh, and a couple other brothers, like uh, uh, Mosi. <laughs> Um, so they're really going strong on this credit union and they, they got a date set for, I think sometime in July where they're hoping to have enough funds to start it. Um, that's, that's quite, that's quite ambitious. Um, <clears throat> July well, they've, been, they've, been, uh, they've had a campaign going since uh, December for members to contribute and people have. So the last time I I heard they had uh, over 50,000. I think they needed uh, another 25,000 to, to get the charter started. And then they were looking for a total of 150,000 or something after that. And they seem to be rolling, so. Um, I just want to throw that out there and um, maybe contact some of them or something. I appreciate it. And um, thank you for that update. Um, 
that's that's news to me. Uh, I follow up on it. Uh, in the, but in regard, in, on the same note is that uh, during our international headquarters committee meeting yesterday, uh, there was discussion brought up by a brother out of Washington. I can't think of his name right now. Um, but <clears throat> there, the, the committee is going to put together a fundraiser letter. Um, for those that have, uh, well, I think the nations may be the only one that, that knows. Um, in philosophy, no, not in philosophy. In, in the course of African philosophy, um, lesson 22, the last lesson is titled "A Five-Year Plan," um, and this was a five-year plan developed by uh, Marcus Garvey and our ancestors as the best way uh, to raise finances, basically. Um, but anyway. We're applying that strategy. We will be applying that strategy uh, very soon, but we will not have a time limit associated with it. So the brother out of Washington, I don't, and I think it may be related to the credit union fundraiser that uh, brother Art was speaking of. Uh, he's going to be putting together a, a letter, uh, a formal letter from the from the UNIA parent body, uh, where we'll be asking, uh, we'll be going out and asking. Um, basically all black individuals and organize, organizations, uh, entertainers, whatever it may be, um, for a contribution um, to uh, the global government, prim primarily for the international headquarters, but. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that's part of what they were talking about. But they're working on that. Like I said, we just discussed it yesterday. So um, I expect some updates within the month uh and once it's released um i'll be you know sharing that with, with our members here in atlanta and the organizations that that we are in contact with here but homework that we need to be doing is organize well at, at least documenting the organizations um black organizations um, race first organizations specifically but uh black organizations that are like-minded um, to, to Garveyite principles. Those would be our, our primary, but uh, nobody's being excluded uh, thus far. We'll have more information on that in the coming weeks. Um, any other questions, comments before we move to uh, officer reports? Last call you know, and any comments to the topic for the day before we move to officer reports. Uh, then we'll have member share right after officer reports. There's only two officers on. Um, Brother Macy's kind of did a whole report, so I don't expect much. Yeah. From him, so it's probably good. I, I just want to uh, finalize with, with these two things. I'm uh, speaking to both of what the, uh, Brother Omar Mutar Brother and Brother Art spoke about. Um, education is the funnel to every economy. So folk, and that, that's why I kind of put it on one of the slides that that's what we can use the properties for is to educate our youth to be able to develop and, and, and uh, these properties. So definitely creating a process where we're able to get our youth to learn the skills to be able to cultivate properties and land to turn them into resources should be a focus of ours. And um, of course, and coupling that with the land of being able to uh, develop themselves into assets to be able to create resources as well. Um, and as far as banking is concerned, you know, I, I, I kind of alluded to that too, but um, that should be the focus too, for uh, us to uh, acquire these properties to be able to support our banking efforts uh, as a nation. So I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to hear about that. Cause that's why I want to go, but not want to go too fast, you know? So I, I would love to uh, hear uh, and connect with the, the, the brothers in uh, Washington, D.C. who are uh, focused on starting that credit union and kind of be a part of that process as well. So, Brother Ari, if you are able to kind of share some information with those brothers and sisters in, in Washington, D.C. who are doing that, I would personally love to connect with them as well and kind of be a liaison. And the last thing I would say is a nation is, no, is not a nation without land. Um, e even though we're starting this agenda in 421, I mean, personally, I see this as an agenda for the nation, the UNIA government. And as we strengthen what the government offers, 
um, as, as it is the product that we're offering to people, then uh, it's going to strengthen our, 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 us as a division here in Atlanta as well. So um, um, this, for me, 2022 is all about organizing us on the global scale. And that's why I travel to Philadelphia. That's why I travel to New York. That's why I'm going to Chicago next week real soon to meet with uh, the immense labor, labor industries there. Uh, but the Clyde Banks, who I had an opportunity to deal with heavily while I was in uh, um, um, uh, Philadelphia. So I, I feel like this year is the year of us strengthening the UNIA as a whole. And uh, I'm excited about what we're doing, and about all of us focusing on different areas that we're focusing on and us bringing it all together to strengthen the product for the for, for our all the million people around the globe to say we are the ones that's organizing organizations. We're already in many organizations. And like I said, the, the people who did it in Philadelphia, they are separate organizations who, who, who wave the red, black, and green flag. So when it comes to trust and ownership, they're two different things. Um, uh, governments uh, have land entrusted to them, like the uh, city of Atlanta still owns the property, but we have individual owners. So as we organize individuals who are doing things, we'll be able to organize ourselves and strengthen ourselves as a government. I think that should be the ultimate focus, to strengthen ourselves on, a nat on an international scale um, in, a in as a long-term approach. Yeah, and, brother, uh, I'll keep in touch with you, Fujian, or I'll get your information from, from, uh, from him. So we'll be in touch. Yeah. I, I, want, I want to offer my uh, apologies here. My, my family has gotten together today and we're actually at the bowling alley right now about to bowl as a family. So I have to jump off the call. Um, hey, but I, enjoy, brother. <laughs> yes, we celebrate Mother's Day together collectively. So um, enjoy. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you, brother Macy. I appreciate you guys. Race first. Race first. Race first. Um, so with that being said, um, I guess I, I'm not the only one. I'm the only one doing the report. I'll make it quick. Get it set up. I've only got a couple things to share. A couple updates. Um. First thing is um, the U.S. is saying that United States is out of the pandemic phase. Um, I'm not saying that we agree or disagree, uh, but as of April 27, 2022, um, there was a article uh, that featured Dr. Fauci um, saying that the U.S. is out of the pandemic phase. Um, <clears throat> and the reason why I'm sharing this with you is just a heads up. Um, you will start to see more activity uh, in your local communities um, and restrictions are probably being eased a little bit. But uh, from my view of the Atlanta City Council meetings, um, our local city is preparing for pre-COVID um, type of events and expenditures specifically. Uh, so they, when, the, when the cities do their budgets, uh, fiscal budgets, one of the things that they plan for is how much money people are gonna be spending or how comfortable people are gonna be spending money. Um, and basically I'm trying to let everyone know that um, they're trying to get people to be more comfortable going out and spending money. Uh, so, so just be aware of that, be prepared for that. Uh, second thing that I came across was the uh, memorial for the um, LA riots following um, Rodney King. So uh, as of April 29th, 2022, uh, it's been 30 years since the LA riots of uh, Rodney King. Um, so that's just 1992. I don't have anything critical about it. Um, it's just a just a, a moment in time um, for us to reflect on, you know, what has happened, what has progressed in that time. I know that, you know, we had the summer of 2020, um, Black Liberation Struggle of 2020. We're two years out from that. 
uh, and I, I already see a difference in, you know, people's behavior and attitudes and motivations. So um, one thing that I try to make sure we do from an organization standpoint uh, and from an inspiration standpoint is we have to strike while the iron's hot. Um, and what I mean by that is we can't plan these type of events. You know, the 2020 George Floyd, uh, Trayvon Martin, uh, Michael Brown, uh, Rodney King. We don't plan, you know, we don't come into the beginning of the year, January, and say, you know, okay, in April, you know, by the time of April, the cops are probably going to beat up on somebody and then we'll start organizing. Um, so we have to be proactive. Uh, we can't wait until these type of things happen. But when they do happen, um, we have to be prepared uh, for our people's response and be prepared to receive our people um, in those times. So that's all I want to say on that one. And the last thing is for anyone in Georgia, um, just a heads up, it's a big year for elections. So they've started the, uh, I've seen a bunch of, that's the only time you really see anything about candidates is when elections are happening. You know, you see all these, um, you know, the election flyers all over the place. And that's the only time you see these people's names and faces is, is when it's time to run for office. But during the year on a regular basis, I never really see these people. But anyway, in the, in the, in Georgia, um, we have an election for U S Senate, um, I think there's one individual, uh, yeah, Raphael Warnock. Um, <clears throat> he won, but by a slim margin, and um, he's got to defend his his Senate seat. So um, the Senate is up for election. Uh, House of Representatives has some seats up for election. Overall thing. Overall. Uh, the governor is up for election, uh, state house, state senate, but basically there's a lot of elections going on. Um, so just be aware, uh, study, you know, the candidates. I'm not, you know, we're not necessarily Democrat or Republican. Uh, we are for the candidate that is going to do the best for African people. And hopefully uh, the candidate has African blood, but from a political standpoint, um, we want what's best for our people. So um, those are the only things that I had. Uh, and I just want to make sure everybody was aware of the elections uh, in Georgia. So with that, there's are there any questions or comments in regards to anything that I shared. Okay. Oh, wait, there is one other thing I need to share. That's our calendar. So for the month of May and um, some of the things going on in June. So uh, haven't been a lot of things going on. We had a uh, Easter egg hunt in April. That was the only thing that we did in the month of April. But May, we've got a lot of events uh, going on this month. So today is the 8th, and we're in our UNIA meeting. Uh, Tuesday the 10th, I'll be sending out an invitation for our study group to study um, philosophies and opinions of Marcus Garvey. On the 14th of May, there's African Liberation Day celebration in Jonesboro, uh, Georgia. Um, and then on the 21st, there's Malcolm X celebration at West End Park. It's actually a two-day celebration. It'll be taking place 21st and the 22nd. So we plan to attend and support that. And then on the 28th of May, there's another African Liberation Day um, meeting that we've been asked to um, attend and kind of sponsor. So that's another uh, big meeting. So the next three weekends, um, big events going on, important events going on in May. And then in June, uh, the only thing that we've got right now for June is Juneteenth. Uh, we expect the Juneteenth parade to be on the 18th of June. 
and we're discussing uh, holding a UNIA orientation um, here in the city of Atlanta in person on the 25th. So we wanted to promote for the month of June, uh, do a big promotion at Juneteenth parade, uh, and then the following weekend have a in-person orientation. Um, but that is the schedule of events for uh, Vision 421 for the month of May and um, going into June. And we don't have a meeting on the 29th. 29th is the fifth Sunday. So um, we'll have a day off on the 29th this month. Any questions or comments on our calendar? Okay. We will move into member share. Uh, as always, brothers, uh, we have to be good listeners. And we uh, like to hear from our sisters first. Uh, with that being said, um, first sister I want to bring in, CBPM member 3094, Suffolk, Virginia, Sister Mary. Greetings. Uh, I don't really have anything to say or add. Uh, just pray all is well with everyone and race first. Race first. Thank you, Sister Mary. One second. All right, um, yeah, we had another sister on the call. She declined to speak today. So we'll go to our brothers. First brother, uh, first brother I want to bring in, you and I 172 out of New York, Dr. Shams. Greetings, Dr. Shams. Greetings, Dr. Well, I don't have much to say. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, you, your signal is a little bit, you sound a little strange, but um, go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's because I have my fan blowing behind me here. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's a little hot in here where I'm at. But, um, no, um, I, I'm just concentrating on um, trying to see if I can maintain you know, the website that I have and add, add other sites to it, you know. And um, I don't know. Uh, I, I like help with advertising if I can get it. But that's about it. And the name of my website is not helpful. USA Legislations People dot com. Peace. Thanks first. Thanks first. Thank you, Dr. Sims. Um, yeah, we're having the same issue at the CBPM um, with the cost of websites uh, on a monthly basis and uh, how much they increase depending on the amount of information that you have. Um, we haven't really found a solution. Um, so, but when we do, we will share that with you. And if you find a solution, please share that with us. But yes, that is a concern. Um, being able to afford uh, having our information online on these various websites. Thank you, Dr. Shams. Next brother I want to go to, uh, Brother Art in Annandale, Virginia. Greetings, Brother Art. Greetings. I don't have anything else to share today, but uh, race first. Race first. Thank you, Brother Art. Um, thank you for being here with us. Uh, next brother, bring in uh, Brother Ormond. Greetings, Brother Ormond. Uh, greetings. Uh, I don't really have anything to share also today, so thank you for the information that you've shared earlier. Race first. Race first. Uh, thank you, Brother Ormond. Um, and that's everyone on the Zoom. Jump over to our conference line. We bring in CDPM number 2714 in East Cleveland, Ohio, Brother Omar Mukhtar. 
peace to the family. It's always a pleasure to speak to the family. Uh, as I always say, prepare for peace in the time of war, prepare for war in the time of peace. Uh, just a few things I want to share. Uh, we have started a what is called a community private police department. So what we actually have done is set up the first community private police department. So it, what that would entail is basically uh, people will be trained to work in the forms of security and also private police. And you can go to the website at communityprivatepolice.com and you can also reach us on the YouTube to see what we're doing as far as policing our own community. Uh, also, we had someone offer us a property, our first mini station in the city of East Cleveland. That would be our first mini police department for the community private police. And whether we know it or not, the people, the community can set up their own police department outside of the public police. It's just two different police departments. One is public, one is private. And we have to go through the same training as any other police officer and probably a little bit better training. Uh, you will be certified by your state. In the state of Ohio, we can, we can actually operate in all the states, uh, all, all cities in the state of Ohio. And I'm going to school uh, for the commandership, which be a school commander. And as a school commander, I would be responsible for training private police officers, private security officers, and security officers. In this way, they will all be certified by the state. They have to go through the same cert certification as law enforcement, and they will be also wearing the same equipment as law enforcement. So that's what you do at the communitypriviatepolice.com. And also you can go to the YouTube and see we offer a whole bunch of services, funerals, uh, we will be doing escorts, uh, we will be doing uh, property, strip malls, and also individuals, commercial and nonprofit businesses. Also, for our, our, we had a situation, and I'm gonna talk about it since Sister Mary didn't wanna say anything. Uh, we ha had to have a security patrol unit in front of the sister's house because she was threatening, being threatened by one of our underdeveloped brothers with a weapon, threatening to shoot her. So we had to put a patrol car. This is the advantage of being able to make different types of moves where you can set patrol cars in front of these individuals' houses. They took out a restraining order, which was a 72 hour restraining order, which is nothing. So, It'd be a lot of things going on. Sometimes people don't want to talk about it. I felt it necessary to talk about. And this was just an example of how you can use private police to deal with your own situations. No police officer can sit at, at a, a standard or stationary post. Only private police officers can do that. And so we have to start creating our own infrastructure on these various different levels. And so she also have uh, a site where you can go and watch the actual uh, video. And also uh, there's a GoFundMe or, or Cash App in which some, some people can actually help sponsor to continue to maintain these patrols in their community. And the community, when you, when, when, even though she's paying it out of her pocket, Really, the whole community is getting that benefit when that patrol car is on that street. And we have to start seeing how we can incorporate through the churches with a security budget or individual as a whole or just donating to the cash app. So that way, these patrols can stay in our community on a constant basis. Not only do it do that, but it also put people to work and add more jobs to the economy. So... If she gets a chance, maybe next time she'll tell you a little bit about it. But that's what we did. We had to actually get someone to actually sit down and have patrol cars, private police patrol cars, 
actually go and sit in front of her house for her and her mother. So just to bring that up, as I always say, we are in a state of war. And when we're in a state of war, we also fight others as well as our own people. So we're fighting on two fronts. So the best thing we can do is continue to organize, continue to build. And I'm sure as we start to build our first mini police department or private police, this can work in any other state. It don't matter where you're at. As long as the qualification is there, we do have a company. You can check it on the website. And it's been around for, we have employees that works. They are armed in various different locations. And this can go on and this, this is designed to not just for business and economics, but also to put people to work. The young guys that come in that's 18, they can work unarmed, but when they get 21, they can get licensed and also to become armed. So this is how we start to employ our people as we continue on with the struggle. As I say, prepare for peace in a time of war, prepare for war in a time of peace. Peace, family, we are at war. Thank you, Brother Omar, East Cleveland, Ohio, uh, for the report on private policing and uh, encouraging uh, all of us in our areas to find out, you know, other ways to protect our communities and outside of, you know, waiting on the government to, to do something for us. So thank you, Brother, uh, thank you, Brother Omar. Um, was there anyone that did not get a chance to share? Okay, uh, before we close, I did want to share one slide um, that we discussed uh, last night in our executive meeting in regards to leadership. Um, and two minutes, we'll be out of here. So in Division 421, um, there's four aspects uh, that we that that each of our leaders will need uh, in order to be uh, successful, and I think this is something that, uh, in looking at it and studying it, this is something that can be applied to other organizations, not just not just ours. But um, I wanted our members to know uh, what we felt was important for leadership, um, and um, consider you know. The, the qualities that they have themselves and if they would qualify for a position of leadership. So there's four things that I feel um, individuals need in order to be effective leaders. Um, first, the first thing is intelligence. And um, from intelligence, from a UNI standpoint, it comes down to understanding the constitution, um, understanding the course of African philosophy, um, our professional intelligence. So Whatever it is that we're doing uh, to put food on the table, um, if you know, I'm, if you're an engineer, a journalist, a, a artist, or whatever it may be, um, bringing those skills to the movement is also a form of intelligence. Uh, having an understanding of what the officer responsibilities are and how we can hold each other accountable, um, and that also relates to outside government officials uh, and understanding what their roles and responsibilities are and how to hold public government officials accountable. And last is training. Uh, there's a 90 day, we have a 90 day training course um, that we will be reinstituting uh, this year in 2022. Last time we did it was 2019. Um, but uh, that is that is critical information that will be needed, uh, which includes the 54 declarations of rights of the Negro peoples of the world. We pledge to the red, black, and green flag and our anthem, the anthem of uh, the UNIACL, Ethiopia, the land of our fathers. This is the information that we need to know. Second thing that a leader must have is access to resources. Um, and those resources can come in two primary forms. Uh, one is financial resources. Um, you know, if, if we don't have funds, it's not really much that we can, well, you can still do a lot. Um, you know, with your own physical being, uh, but there will come a time where we need funds um, 
to get things done. So we have to have those resources um, to be effective. Second type of resources is networks. So that is who we know, uh, the people we know, and, and the access uh, those relationships can, can provide us. So uh, I may not know anything about um, landscaping, but I may know somebody that knows about landscaping. So that's a resource from a, from a networking standpoint. And then uh, charity. So when we're doing charity and giving back to others, uh, it's difficult to do that if we don't have resources ourselves. So um, resources is the second uh, thing that you need. So intelligence and resources are two uh, fundamentals. And the last two are kind of uh, nature-based, um, but there's some aspect of, of control that we have in them. The third thing that you need in order to be an effective leader is time. Um, and from a time aspect, that for me, that breaks down into availability of time and the management of time. Um, we all have 24 hours in a day. Uh, no one has more or less than 24 hours. We all have the same amount of time. So it comes down to uh, how efficient we are with our time and how well we manage our time. But uh, when the call is made, you know, that, hey, we need individuals um, downtown Atlanta, you know, at, at three o'clock on a Saturday, um, you know, everything should, our, our houses should be in order. You know, our grass should be cut, our dishes, you know, clean, our, our, our clothes washed. Um, but those things should be taken care of so that we're available to provide our time to the movement. Um, and if those things are not taken care of, then we won't have time uh, to give to the movement. So time is the third aspect. And the fourth aspect is health. Um, that's something that we can control to an extent, um, but at some point, you know, sometimes we can't. And, uh, you know, when you don't have it, health and time are two things that you don't realize you had them until you lost them, you know, and, and once they're gone, then you start to look back and think, oh man, I used to have a lot of time or I used to, you know, um, be a lot healthier or, or uh, physically fit than, than you are now. Um, so we have to focus on health from a physical aspect as well as mental. Uh, make sure we're getting our rest, make sure we hydrate, make sure we have the proper diet, which not only includes things that we eat, but um, spiritual diet, um, what we're listening to, um, our visual diet as well. Um, we should be um, consuming things that are beneficial and uh, productive and encourage, you know, help encourage our spirit. And exercising, um, you know, just to maintain our health. But from a leadership standpoint, uh, effective leadership standpoint, we have to have some level of intelligence. We have to know what we're doing and why we're doing it. We have to have resources uh, to not only be able to help ourselves, but to be able to help others. We have to have time. Um, if we don't have time, then we won't be able to do anything. Like not having time is, uh, time is life, you know? So if you don't have time, it's, it's, that's what people in the grave are. They don't have time. You know? <laughs> they, they can't contribute uh, their time to anything. And that's what, when you get too busy, too bogged down, you lose your time. Uh, and then the last one is health. And that's just, you know, same thing, comparable with time. Um, if you don't have your health, you, you can't do anything. So I just wanted to share that with the, with the group. Um, you can take it, you know, how you want, apply it as you want, uh, modify it as you want. And, um, those are some of the things that we are looking at uh, locally to make sure, you know, we're capable to uh, take care of ourselves as well as contribute to the movement. So, there's no questions or comments. Um, we will, uh, our final, final call, questions or comments before we move to close. Last call, questions, comments before we move to close. Okay, in closing, uh, 
you ready for the uh, ready for the boom God. But yeah, we're yeah, closing. Let me just read these. Let me just read this one more time. Um, so, uh, for those that were not here in the beginning, um, who we are, we are the UNI ACL, and what we stand for can be described in the preamble. The Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League is a social, friendly, humanitarian, charitable, educational, institutional, constructive, and expansive society. And is founded by persons desiring to the utmost to work for the general uplift of the Negro peoples of the world. And the members pledge themselves to do all in their power to conserve the rights of their noble race and to respect the rights of all mankind, believing in the brotherhood of man and the fatherhood of God. The motto of the organization is one God, one aim, one destiny. Let their Therefore, let justice be done to all mankind, realizing that if the strong oppresses the weak, confusion and discontent will ever mark the path of man. But with love, faith, and charity towards all, the reign of peace and plenty will be heralded into the world, and the generations of men shall be called blessed. Uh, if you would, come off mute and um, repeat after me. And we'll pull it out. One God. One God. One God. One aim. One aim. One destiny. One destiny. One destiny. One destiny. Okay. Africa. 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 For the African. For the African. Yeah. For the African. Those at home. Those at home. Those at home. And those abroad. And those abroad. And those abroad. Great first thing. Go in Go in person. Have a blessing. Great first. Great first. Great first.